What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Welcome back to another Build Sember episode. Today we are going to be doing some internal fillets on the big old V2 here. Um, I'm just going to do a relatively quick video showing you guys how I'm doing it, and then uh, we'll just upload it because it's Build Sember and we got stuff to do. Um, we got a couple other. We actually have another rocket project going on in the background back there. I have one at my house, and my dad and I are about to start another one. Build Sember is coming in hot. Uh, at any rate, before I get into this, I just want to let you guys know I kind of didn't really mention it very well in the last video, but I have two new pieces of merch out that are only available through December. Uh, they're Build Sember shirts and my favorite pint glasses. You know, so you can put beverages in that I'm not sure I'm allowed to talk about on YouTube at this point. They're both available at the link in the description below and the pinned comment. And if you use the discount code JKBR, that's you know, just keep building rockets as an acronym. You get free shipping all the way through the end of December. Come January 1st, and merch is gone, and it's not coming back. So if you guys want to help support the channel, everything, check those out. I already ordered one of the glasses and one of the shirts because it looks pretty cool. Like we talked about last time, doing the internal fillets on this rocket is going to be a little bit different of a scenario than how I usually do it. Uh, if you've watched my channel for a while, you know typically I'll drill holes and use a syringe to inject chopped carbon fiber filled epoxy. Um, however, having the front open like this gives me a way easier opportunity to do them. On the other side though, the fin, the fillets, uh, the fin tabs don't go to the back centering ring. They just kind of drop off. So we're gonna have to be kind of careful and not let the epoxy uh, run down off the back and make a giant mess on the inside of the tail cone. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a chore, but back here it tapers down pretty far as there's no way to get my hand in there, but I have a solution. I'll show you guys. All right, so this is kind of hard to explain because I know you guys can't see it super well, but the fin tabs end, you know, I, like I said, I can't really exemplify it super well, but they don't go all the way to the bottom, so there's a chance of the epoxy running off the backside, which is what we don't want. So, uh, what we're going to do is I've got this syringe that, once again, we're injecting fillets with a syringe, but this time we're going to use the silicone hose, and there happened to be a size at Lowe's that fits right over the end of the syringe. We're going to cut ourselves a nice long piece and reach in there and squirt our epoxy in. Now, doing it this way is beneficial because I can make the epoxy way thicker than usual with carbon fiber. So hopefully we can get to a point where a bunch of epoxy is not going to run out of it and be all over the place and we can get it to lay down nice and smooth. Hindsight tells me I should have maybe made a centering ring or something that was gonna butt up against the back of the fin so there'd be a dam because I cannot reach in there and get anything in there. I was thinking maybe a piece of tape or something, but at any rate, we're just going to uh, try and inject it maybe an inch from the end of the tab and pull it all the way forward. And then hopefully it'll settle out enough that it reaches back there, uh, you know, maybe half an inch or three quarters, almost to the edge, but doesn't quite run all the way down. So let's do that. All right, we got three pumps of West Systems Epoxy here with the 205, I believe, slow hardener. Get it mixed up pretty good um, using a plastic knife because we are out of craft sticks over here apparently. So now what we're going to do is start adding chopped carbon. I found a person who sells it in bulk on Amazon so I have a lifetime supply. So we're going to get a healthy pinch in there since we can go pretty thick this route. All right, so thick uh, we definitely got. I maybe got a little overzealous on the uh, carbon there, but I think it'll still uh, flow through that tube. So I'm gonna put some gloves on. We're gonna give this a shot. Okay, so here's my thing is when we get to the end of the tube or when we get the syringe empty, hopefully there's enough of a seal here that it's not gonna just like and push a bunch of epoxy. But uh, there's only one way we can find out really. Well, about the best way I can put that is that it was a disaster. Um, I'm just going to try and clean the top of the tube up with some denatured alcohol, 
so that uh, when we go put that top centering ring on, there's not going to be epoxy with carbon fiber uh, blocking it. Um, there's going to need to be some revisions for the next set for sure. Uh, the tube, I couldn't get it to stay flat and straight, which is a little unfortunate. I mean, there's fillets in there. They're, <laughs> they're going to be plenty strong. But uh, yeah, it's not, not my prettiest work. Uh, I'll probably use a little bit less carbon fiber in the next batch. However, it was pretty beneficial for me for this batch because um, it was so thick that I couldn't really make a huge, huge mess. This could have been a whole lot worse because the tube also, while it was tight on the syringe, um, wasn't, wouldn't stay on once there was epoxy in there because everything got slippery, I couldn't hold on to it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's fillets in there for sure. And I'll show you here in a second. They're settling out a little bit, so it's not too bad. Uh, but it's not too good either. Granted, I've never really seen my internal fillets from the outside before, so maybe this is just what they usually look like. However, um, I mean, it's a good thing they'll be inside the rocket and you won't see them. I'll tell you that much. But let me finish cleaning some stuff up. I'll show you here in a sec. All right, so you can see in there, I mean, they look like fillets. Oh, God. There you go, kind of. You really can't see in there, but uh, there's just kind of... There's epoxy on top somehow. I don't really know how we manage that. But, uh, I mean, I can tell you that those are probably going to be pretty strong. They're just not the prettiest thing. And the big issues we were running to was that, uh, for one, the hose wouldn't stay on the end of the syringe. And two, the hose was kind of curved, and I thought I was going to be able to hold it flat and push it back there, but I can't. So I've made some revisions for the next attempt after these dry. All right, so for the next round, uh, I took this inside and ran it over the burner a bunch of times so that it was straight and it's holding its shape, which is good. And I'm going to put a little dab of CA on here. And slide that over. I'm gonna let that dry. And then hopefully, we might put a zip tie around that too, just so we're completely safe here. All right, I'm gonna throw the zip tie around here. There's definitely a learning curve and a lot of off-camera potty language involved in this. Every time I try to do something new, I managed to mess it up pretty royally. Oh, stop running away. But if I can keep myself from getting epoxy all over my hands and a syringe this time, then I should be able to hold on to it. All right, the spillets that are in here have been drying for about seven hours. So they're not like completely cured, but you can touch them and it doesn't leave any sticky residue on your fingers. So we're gonna try this again. Um, we've got the silicone hose straightened out and the zip tie there holding it in place. We did a little bit thinner on the epoxy. Still relatively thick because I don't want it to run all over the place, but if the epoxy flow was not the issue, that's for sure. And one thing we learned that we're going to take into consideration from the last set was that you know, you have to have the whole thing full for it to work, but once you have a syringe, you can't just push it with air. So you have to keep refilling it, which was a little bit of a pain. Um, be nice to just have an extended syringe. Just a really giant syringe is what I need, honestly. But this should be a lot better considering that's uh, nice and straight. So I don't have to fight to try and keep it from curling. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. Grab a paper towel. Ah, 
aren't very many handy. All right, I'm gonna start with this much to kind of prime the system, if you will. See, it's already running down into there. It wasn't quite that uh, loosey-goosey on the last one. Very satisfying to look at. All right, now this is gonna be an interesting trick. You know what, we'll just go ahead and push some in there. Try not to drip epoxy all over everything. We're gonna put some more in there. All right, so what I'm gonna do is get this in where we want it. That much more resembles my initial plan. I wonder if I can do it this way. It's a lot like frosting in there. <laughs> but yes, we've definitely, uh, applied lessons from the last time pretty decently, I'd say. Bit of a low spot. Hmm. That's not too bad, actually. Now it just kind of needs to settle out, and I'm hoping it will. Now, how do we get this out of here? Is a question. It looks like there's a lot of wasted epoxy there, but it's actually mostly just carbon fiber in there. Show you guys how I got all the carbon fiber out of there. I just um, filled this cup about a quarter of the way up with denatured alcohol and was uh, basically using this like a plunger. I guess it is a plunger, it's a syringe. It has a plunger on it anyway. There you go. Flip it to each side. I didn't think the CA was going to stick to the silicone, but the fact that it stayed on and then as soon as I ran the uh, denatured alcohol through where the CA was at, it just immediately let go. So it must have been doing something. So we're going to let that all dry and then uh, we'll tack it with CA again. So I'm just going to do the same thing with the syringe. Funny enough, like I was saying, there's so little epoxy left and it was just mostly carbon fiber that if I filtered all this carbon fiber out, I could probably still use this denatured alcohol. And so if you've ever been curious about what the internal fillets look like, uh, like my Wildman builds or when you do your own injected fillets from the outside, that's about it. Because if you look at the underside, it looks pretty similar to how it looked in my uh, other builds. So, but yeah, definitely a lot more reserved, a lot less of a mess in there. And uh, I think that's going to be about perfect. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for this build Sember installment. That is how I'm doing in the turtle fillets on the V2. You get to watch me completely blow it on one and then uh, refine my system and do it how I thought I was going to the first time, the second time. So I'm going to follow those instructions that I just... Uh,
I'm going to follow those steps that I just made for myself and do it all again for the next two sets. And then that's all the internal fillets I'm doing. I know a lot of people in this situation would do it inside where the boat tail meets the fin as well. But with the gaps on the slots of the fins, I could back tape them or whatever. But this is such a stubby rocket. I don't want to add any extra ounce of weight that I don't need to to the back end. Um, I know the solution is to just put a longer motor in it, but uh, yeah, so we're just going to do the internals, the fin roots against the motor tube, and then we're going to do external fillets as usual, just like with all my other rockets, just like the one I was standing on. Obviously, I'm not going to stand on this one because of the fin span, but uh, it's not going anywhere. And if we have a rough landing and I get proven wrong, then so be it. But with fins that stick out and stuff like this, I tend to run oversized parachutes anyway, so that is what I'm going to do. We're going to take whatever parachute I think is the right size and bump it up a couple feet from there. That way we get nice soft landings. But uh, hey, at any rate, thanks for sticking around and watching this video. Don't forget to check out the Just Keep Building Rockets merch. Uh, link is in the description or you can go to rocketvlogs.com and find it. JKBR is your coupon code for free shipping. Thank you to all my Patreon supporters. I'm going to throw the list of names at the end of the videos from now on as well. Special little shout out to those who are chipping me money monthly, helping me out with this. Um, I'm planning a trip to Maryland, actually, for my uh, my first experience at MDRA, which I've wanted to do for a really long time. I'm going to try my hardest to make it out to Red Glare. I want to see Dan Michaels Patriot and a bunch of other really cool projects. Meet Jerry O'Sullivan, who was the reason I built my iris in the first place. Wanted to go for a really long time, so I figured it'd be good content and might be a good time to try to get out there. So, Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. When we hit 10,000, we're giving that rocket away. It's free and it helps me out a lot. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time.